Deep cycle batteries are found in a variety of vehicles, like trains, boats and forklift trucks. Whereas a car battery provides a quick surge of current to start the engine, a deep cycle battery provides a steady amount of current over a long period of time. Let's charge over to the factory. Deep cycle batteries range from 2 to 48 volts. Their power is generated by cells, a group of lead plates coated in lead oxide and acid. This casting machine produces lead grids that will become the plates in the power cells. The machine pours molten lead into grid-shaped moulds. Water circulating through the mould hardens the metal in just five seconds. The machine casts two types of grids, negatives and positives. The next machine coats the grids with a chemical paste that contains lead oxide and acid. The positives get one paste formulation, the negatives a different one. The grids are now called plates. Workers stack them in cases, alternating positive and negative, then drop them into tanks of sulfuric acid to charge. The lead oxide and acid in the paste store the power. After charging for 24 to 72 hours, depending on the model, the plates go into a machine that washes them three times to remove acid residue, which if left, would corrode the metal. The charging process blackens the plates, which are now called dry charge plates. A machine wraps each positive in glass strand matting, an insulation material similar to fiberglass, then in a plastic envelope. These coverings protect the plates from short circuits. Workers stack the plates again, positive, negative, positive, negative. This time though, each stack contains a specific number from 5 to 33 plates, depending on the battery model. Each stack will become one cell. A cell provides 2 volts of electricity. Each plate has a tab. A robotic machine cleans the tabs with a wire brush and a chemical solution called flux. Then it dips the tabs in molten tin. This tin coating will improve the bond when they solder the tabs together. The robot wipes the tabs on a flux-imbued sponge to clean their surface once again, then drops the cells into a mould containing molten lead. This solders the tabs together, bonding the plates within each cell. The process casts two lead posts on the cell's positive side and two on its negative side. These posts will connect the cells and build the required voltage. Next, each cell goes into a polypropylene casing called a jar. Each cell is tested to make sure it functions properly. This also shows if the cell is positioned correctly in the jar, so that the positive and negative signs on the cell cover will be on the corresponding posts. The cover is heat sealed and the protruding posts are sealed with lead. Air is pumped into the cell and soapy water is brushed over the cover to test the seals. Any bubbles indicate a gap that needs to be resealed. In another part of the factory, various small components are molded from molten lead. Among those parts are the connectors that link one cell to another. Workers weld them to the posts. These are 8 volt batteries, so for each one, they connect four cells inside a polyethylene case. Now that assembly is complete, the case cover goes on. These rubber grommets keep water from seeping inside and shorting the battery. Now the inside is filled with sulfuric acid, which functions as an electrolyte the medium that helps the lead in the plates conduct electricity.